Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So it is 2012. It's the 26th anniversary of our congregation and the 25th anniversary of our beautiful church building. You know, over the past few weeks, I've been taking some time to think about this service, this sermon, and our celebration for today, and I've begun to start wondering about why we celebrate anniversaries at all. I mean, usually we get together and we come around a big meal. Usually there's some really nice dessert. A lot of times we exchange gifts. But why? I mean, if you think about the milestones of your life, your birthdays, your anniversaries, maybe your high school reunion, why? Why do we do these things? This past week, my family celebrated Dietrich's birthday. Dietrich turned seven years old on Tuesday, and for us, it was a celebration of accomplishment. For one whole year, Dietrich safely made it through without any major broken bones, any concussions, or anything else that would permanently mar or damage him. And so for us, it was a birthday of accomplishment, a celebration of safely persevering for another year. And I would suspect that if you think about your wedding anniversary, there might be a sense of that as well, a sense of accomplishment, particularly if it was a bad year of persevering through another year. But probably even more so, wedding anniversaries are a time of reflection. This past month, I know that the Richardsons and the Ofers both celebrated wedding anniversaries, and I'm sure for them, much like Trish and I in August, their anniversaries were a time of reflection. A time of remembering, of looking back and recalling the good times and maybe even examining the challenging times. And then I would hope that after that they would take just a few moments to look forward with a sense of anticipation and wonder about what is to come next. Well, for us here today, as we celebrate the 25th anniversary of our church, it is important for us to realize that in many, many ways, our congregational anniversary is very similar to a wedding anniversary. And that's because we truly are the bride of Christ. For 25 years, we have been the true church in this time and in this place, set here by God to be his bride. Now, please don't get me wrong. I don't want to get into trouble with any visitors who might be here today. I'm not saying that there aren't other congregations close by. I'm not saying that they aren't the true church as well. In fact, I'm not talking about any other congregations at all. But looking at our congregation, looking at our church, we are the true bride of Christ. And it's important that as we celebrate this anniversary, as we celebrate this time, that we look back with a little bit of reflection, that we remember what has happened, and then we look forward with anticipation to what's to come. Well, as most of you know, the truth is there is no perfect marriage. Most of you here are married or have been married, and you know that we are all human. We are all sinful, and because of that, there is no perfect relationship, and there is no easy marriage. As most of you also know, I have been here just a little less than a year now. But as I have gotten to know the congregation, as I have done the pictorial history, which you'll see here in just a few minutes, I feel as though I've gotten to know St. John. 
And the truth is, in many ways, we are not unlike other congregations. Over the years, there have been people who have come and gone. There have been pastors who have come and gone. As I was putting together the pictorial history and looking through the pictures, I realized that I didn't know most of the faces for about the two-thirds of the program. About the last third, I started seeing faces that I recognized more and more frequently up until about the time I was installed. And then, of course, I know most all of you now. And as I looked at the charter, which was signed back in 86, it's on display in the fellowship hall, there's probably less than a handful of names that I actually know who the people are. People come and go. Sometimes they leave peacefully. They move to another city, to another state, maybe even to another country. But that's not always the case. Sometimes they live right here. And they leave in frustration or in anger. At times, words have been exchanged that we wish we could take back. People leave without knowing the forgiveness that we offer in Jesus Christ. And more than that, I know that there are times when we didn't always share the gospel. First of all, with one another, sharing the peace and the forgiveness with each other of the same family. But I know that we've also missed opportunities to the neighbors and the community around us. There is no perfect marriage and we too, in our marriage with Christ, have failed. But there is one big difference between our personal marriages with our spouse and our marriage as a church with Christ. And that difference is Christ, Jesus himself. You see, in any normal marriage, both the husband and the wife, they contribute to the frustrations and the miscommunication of the marriage. But that's not the case with our Savior. Jesus is perfect. He always has been. He always will be. He was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so no matter what trouble we get ourselves into, the one constant that we can always count on is that Jesus is there waiting for us forgiving us and calling us back. You know, the truth is, our relationship with Jesus, it's really not that much different from that of Zacchaeus in our gospel reading for today. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, which meant that, much like you or I, he was a sinner. But that really doesn't give you the full picture of Zacchaeus. If you sometimes read in your Bibles, go to Luke 18 and you'll read of a Pharisee who was praying alongside the road and he was praying rather loudly so that everyone could hear him. And he said, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortionists, the unjust, adulterers, or like that tax collector. And so you see Zacchaeus, he was viewed by his community and put into the same class of people as extortionists, adulterers, and prostitutes. And so when Jesus finds Zacchaeus, and he tells Zacchaeus, come down from that tree, I'm going to stay at your house tonight. There was a great uproar among the people who were following Jesus. A thought that this new, righteous, and powerful rabbi would stay with someone of such low moral character as Zacchaeus. People didn't understand it. But look at what happens to Zacchaeus. Jesus spends just one evening at Zacchaeus' house. He shows just a little care, a little attention. And before the night is through, Zacchaeus comes forward and he says, Lord, the half of my goods I now give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone, if I have stolen, if I have cheated, if I have taken anything unjustly, I will repay it fourfold. 
Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' house. And in short time, Zacchaeus repents. His life does a complete 180. And he commits to making right whatever he had done wrong. And with that confession of faith, Jesus comes forward and says, Today salvation has come to this house. For Zacchaeus also is a son of Abraham. Well, salvation came to Zacchaeus' house because Jesus was at Zacchaeus' house. And although Zacchaeus was a son of Abraham by birth, he was now a true son of Abraham, this time by faith. Well, for 25 years, Jesus has not just visited our house. He has lived here. He has been faithful to us. For 25 years, He has met us here with His Word and His sacrament each and every week. And although you and I, although we constantly sin and turn away from Him, although at times we would rather be married to our money or to our job or maybe even to our retirement hobbies, still Jesus remains faithful to us. He forgives us all of our sins. He forgives our unfaithfulness. And He calls us back to a life of grace and mercy and love with Him. And so as we celebrate this anniversary today, as we celebrate 25 years as a congregation, we do it not with a sense of accomplishment, as though we have persevered, but instead we do it with a heart full of thanksgiving. For God has been faithful to us. We look back with a heart of praise to a God who has always been there, even when we haven't. But then, knowing what a good and gracious and loving God we have, we also look forward with a sense of anticipation to the future. You see, just like Zacchaeus, you and I, we also are true sons and daughters of Abraham by faith. And so we look forward to a glorious future, knowing that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I mean, if you think about our Lord for just a minute, if He was willing to suffer and die upon that cross for your sins, how much more in the future will He be willing to live with us, to walk with us, to talk with us, to lead us and guide us into a glorious future? And with the very Son of God by our side, with Jesus as our glorious bridegroom, there is absolutely nothing that we cannot do. And in fact, Jesus tells us exactly that. He says, ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened. You and I, we have a truly glorious future ahead of us because we go forward with Jesus by our side. You know, today as we celebrate the different milestones of life, we all do it for different reasons. Sometimes we celebrate out of a sense of accomplishment, out of a sense of perseverance and safety. Sometimes we celebrate as we reflect upon the past and as we remember what has happened. Sometimes we celebrate with an anticipation for what is to come. Well, for us here today, as we celebrate 25 years as Christ's bride here in Canyon City, we do it not with a sense of accomplishment for anything we have done, but instead we do it with a heart of thanksgiving and praise 
that Jesus has been with us, that he has been faithful for those 25 years. God has been with us. And by God's grace and by his mercy, he will also be with us for at least 25 more. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen.